Can Toyota save the combustion engine? Recently, Toyota developed a liquid hydrogen combustion engine, which competed in the Fuji 24-hour race. Prior to the race, Toyota claimed this is, quote, the first time ever that a vehicle will race using liquid hydrogen. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're discussing an impressive step for combustion engines, potentially offering a solution that will allow for carbon-free racing with all the noise that drivers and spectators alike love to hear. And it could mean a solution for the many combustion engines on the road today, making use of existing cars without the need for rare minerals. So when I first heard about this, I got very excited for two major reasons. First of all, hydrogen as a fuel requires massive fuel tanks. But if you turn into liquid hydrogen, you can put 75% more fuel in the same amount of space. So you help to solve this space problem. The other challenge that comes along with hydrogen is that it starts to boil off if you don't keep it below minus 253 degrees Celsius. Well, in racing, you use fuel very quickly. So you don't have to worry about this boil off issue. So for those two reasons, this seems to make perfect sense as a fuel used in racing. On top of that, of course, you don't have any carbon emissions aside from the small amount of engine oil which may get consumed. You also don't really have to worry about NOx as long as you have a solid catalytic converter in place. And you don't have to worry about insane pressure vessels used to contain gaseous hydrogen at 10,000 PSI. So, you know, there's potential dangers in having these very high pressure tanks and you don't have to maintain them over the long period of time because you're keeping hydrogen at atmospheric pressure. Okay, so how does it work? Well, the theory behind it all is pretty straightforward. So you have a liquid hydrogen tank where you're storing that liquid hydrogen at negative 253 degrees Celsius, close to absolute zero. You then have a fuel pump which pumps that liquid hydrogen to a vaporizer where you add heat and thus are changing this hydrogen from liquid to gaseous form. That passes through a pressure chamber and basically this is simply a vessel for maintaining any pressure changes that that your engine is going to experience uh, because you're going to have that throttle controlling how much fuel is going into the engine. So you're going to have this varying pressure occur and that pressure chamber is going to take care of that. Then you're just going to directly inject that hydrogen into your engine. In this case it is a 1.6 liter direct injection turbocharged inline three cylinder in the GR Corolla. And from a combustion standpoint it operates much like any other gas engine out there just using hydrogen instead of gasoline and for the most part your only emission is water. Okay, so if all you do is take a surface level approach to understanding this technology, it sounds awesome, optimistic, and allows you to think, hey, we just need to figure a few things out. And I genuinely have incredible respect and admiration for Toyota experimenting and pushing the boundaries here. They have brilliant engineers working on this, but through this video, you'll come to deeply understand why I take such a pessimistic tone when it comes to hydrogen combustion. We'll start by discussing the pump problem and quoting Toyota about the pump issue. I believe it is the most challenging aspect of liquid hydrogen technology and we are still facing hardware issues. Okay, so what's so hard about a fuel pump? Well, inside our hydrogen tank, we have our fuel pump. And you can think of this uh, much like a combustion engine. You have a reciprocating piston, and that is what we're using in order to increase the pressure of that fuel to deliver it to the engine. So as this piston comes down, it pulls in that low pressure liquid hydrogen. And then as that piston moves up, this valve closes, this valve is open, and it pushes up that hydrogen, increasing the pressure as it exits. Uh, so you're pressurizing that liquid hydrogen as it moves on to the next stage, which is the vaporizer. So what's so difficult about this? Well, hydrogen is a very small molecule. And what we're doing is we're taking a pump, we're putting it in this tank, then we're filling it with liquid hydrogen, which is going to drop the temperature from room temperature down to minus 253 degrees Celsius. Well, what happens when you drop something that dramatically in temperature? It shrinks. So everything here is going to shrink. You're going to have different rates at which things change in size. Basically, no matter what materials you use, you're going to have everything shrink. And so as a result, maintaining a seal with this piston is very difficult to do because you have such a dramatic change in temperature between room temperature, when you create this thing, put it in there, it's sitting there before you fill it, 
and then you fill it up and everything shrinks down. So how do you make it work at such a low temperature? So think of that as if this is not sealed, well then when you pull in that hydrogen and you start pushing this piston up, everything just starts leaking past that piston and you're not doing any work. So it becomes inefficient and it doesn't do that good of a job at raising the pressure. Also, often in you know piston cylinder devices, you use an oil in order to lubricate any metal on metal contact. Well, in this case, you don't have that option option because if you use oil, it contaminates the hydrogen. So you can't use a lubricant here in order to make sure that you don't have wear on these sides. Well, that means your pump isn't going to last very long. So to better understand this problem, let's compare the GR Corolla, which was powered by gaseous hydrogen in 2021, versus the GR Corolla in 2023 and how its results were on the 24-hour Fuji race. Well, in 2021, using gas as the fuel, gaseous hydrogen, it was able to complete about 10 laps per tank. Now, liquid hydrogen means you have more hydrogen in the same amount of space, so they were able to carry more hydrogen on board, allowing them to travel about 14 laps per tank before they had to take a pit stop to refuel. Now, in 2021, they had 35 fuel stops. In 2023, as you would imagine, they had fewer, just 25 pit stops stops uh, for fueling as a result of being able to travel longer since they had more hydrogen. So what were the total laps completed in 2021? They completed 358 laps and in 2023 using liquid hydrogen 358 laps the exact same number. Okay, so the 2021 car spent about four hours refueling in the pits, whereas the 2023 car with liquid hydrogen spent much, much, much less time refueling in the pits. So why do they have the exact same number of laps? Well, it's because they had to replace this fuel pump twice during the race, and both times it took about three and a half hours. So they spent a total of seven hours replacing that fuel pump. Now, they knew they were gonna have to do this in advance because they knew the fuel pump couldn't last. But regardless, the fact that this fuel pump has to be replaced so frequently means that they're not really able to create an advantage over gaseous hydrogen. Some other things to note, because we're using liquid hydrogen and reliant upon this fuel pump, the pressure of injection within the engine is actually low lower than using gaseous hydrogen. Because with gaseous hydrogen, you already have it at a really high pressure in the tank, and so you can deliver a really high pressure at the engine. So because of that lower injection pressure, you actually make less power, even though you're starting with a colder fuel. Also, as a result of the added equipment for this liquid hydrogen GR Corolla, it is a significantly heavier car. Plus 250 kilograms over the gaseous version, it is at 1950 kilograms. This is a very heavy vehicle. So between having less power and being heavier, it's about four seconds per lap slower, which hurts it in overall laps completed. And unfortunately, to add insult to injury, if you look at the results from last year in 2022, when the GR Corolla was running on gaseous hydrogen at Fuji, it completed 478 laps. So 120 additional laps versus the liquid hydrogen version. And if you were to say, okay, let's say we never replaced the pump and we take back these seven hours just for racing. Well, that puts the liquid hydrogen at about 505 laps, very close to what it got last year. So not really that big of an improvement, even though it's a massive improvement in energy density. Okay, so pumping liquid hydrogen is a problem, but something I believe is an even bigger problem is how much space hydrogen takes up. Quoting Toyota, it's not currently possible to increase the energy density of hydrogen any further, so we'll have to increase tank capacity instead. This means using massive fuel tanks if you want reasonable range. Now, I know there are some nerds out there ready to claim, Jason, there are denser forms of hydrogen than liquid hydrogen. So let's address this. All right, so let's say we have a box with the dimensions of one meter by one meter by one meter, one cubic meter box. And we fill this box with gaseous hydrogen at 700 bar. What is the mass of the hydrogen in that one cubic meter box? Well, it's about 40 kilograms of hydrogen. Now, let's say we fill it with liquid hydrogen. How much hydrogen do we have within that box? Well, about 71 kilograms of hydrogen. Now, let's say we fill that box with water. 
how much hydrogen do we have within the box? Well, 111 kilograms of water. So as you can see right here, there is a more dense way of putting hydrogen in a container, right? You can have more than liquid hydrogen allows for in the same space. But what anyone that ever tells you this is leaving out are two critical points. First of all, how much does water weigh? Well, about a thousand kilograms in one cubic meter. So now we're taking our weight and instead of that box weighing 71 kilograms, it weighs a thousand kilograms, an extraordinary amount of more weight just for a bit of an increase in how much hydrogen we have. That's problem number one. And this isn't just water that we're talking about. There's all kinds of different substances which have denser hydrogen than just pure liquid hydrogen. But regardless, they're going to add a significant amount of weight and it requires energy to split that hydrogen off from the oxygen. So H2O, you need energy to go in to take that hydrogen off of the oxygen and then use it. And so no one talks about those two parts. So basically you should listen to Toyota. If you want the densest form of hydrogen as a fuel, you need to use it as a liquid. Okay, so in theory, one advantage of liquid hydrogen is that you have more flexibility with the shape of the tank. With gaseous hydrogen, you have to use these high pressure vessels, which have a set cylindrical shape Shape, which is ideal for containing these high pressures. Well, you don't have that challenge here because we're keeping it at atmospheric pressure, right? So in theory, this is true, but in practice, it's not really true. Why is that? Well, take for example, a sphere and then a very long, very flat rectangular box. Both of these have a volume of one meter cubed, but unfortunately this box is going to have about two and a half times the surface area. So think of this as like, you know, a battery within an electric car. You make it very long, very wide, and very short within so it can store underneath the car. You know, that's a convenient place to put it. Uh, unfortunately, all that surface area means you have a lot more area for heat to come in, and that heat coming in boils off that hydrogen. So you really want to be very efficient with your size so that your ratio of your volume to surface area is as high as possible. You want a lot of volume, you don't want much surface area. And unfortunately, if you get creative with the shape, then you introduce a lot of surface area. Okay, well that means a spherical or cylindrical tank, and this isn't a very convenient size to just plop inside of a car. It's a very awkward shape. Okay, well that's not even the biggest problem as it relates to the space problem with liquid hydrogen. So in order to understand this, we're going to compare our hydrogen Corolla to a Formula One car. Now, both have about the same fuel tank size. For the hydrogen Corolla, it is a 148 liter tank, and in F1, you're somewhere around 140 to 150 liters. So we'll just say that they have the exact same tank size. Incredible, makes this nice and easy. The fuel mass in Formula One, well, gasoline is quite heavy, uh, so 110 kilograms of fuel about is what we have within this 148 liter hydrogen fuel tank. If you were to completely fill that, you'd be at about 10.5 kilograms of hydrogen. So the range of an F1 car with a full tank is about 300 kilometers. The range of our liquid hydrogen Corolla while traveling out on the track about 65 kilometers. This is pitiful. So why is the range of this hydrogen Corolla so low? Well, because of how much energy is in hydrogen. So despite the fact that they have the exact same fuel tank size, our F1 car is gonna have about 1320 kilowatt hours of energy within that fuel versus our hydrogen Corolla, which just has about 350 kilowatt hours of energy within that same size fuel tank. Now, it's worth pointing out that yes, F1 cars are lighter and they're more efficient. However, they have way, way more power and they travel way faster and they have really high downforce. So all of these are working against them and how much fuel they consume. So really, uh, when you start to look at these and you think, okay, how do I get an F1 car to travel 300 kilometers using liquid hydrogen? Well, you would need a tank size of 560 liters, about 150 gallons. That is an absurd tank size. And keep in mind, again, this is gonna be this like spherical pod that you just have to sit somewhere in the car. Uh, so very awkward in order to make this happen. And again, another little caveat we have here, 
you're not actually gonna store liquid hydrogen at 100% within that tank. BMW did this with a vehicle in about 2006, and they found that you wanna keep that liquid hydrogen below an 80% fill level, much like you would do with a propane tank for your grill. So within this, if we say we only fill at 80%, well, then our F1 tank, in order to travel those 300 kilometers for a full race distance, you'd need a 700 liter tank, or about 185 gallons gallons. Absolutely absurd the giant size of the tank that would be required in order to make a liquid hydrogen F1 car work. Finally, we get to the temperature problem, and it is my belief that because of this issue, we will never see large-scale adoption of liquid hydrogen combustion engines in passenger cars. Toyota was asked about this in a press conference, to which they replied, we have a couple ideas about the boil-off issue, but we haven't made much progress yet. All right, so here's the problem. Inside our tank, we have liquid hydrogen at negative 253 degrees C. Outside our tank, it's whatever temperature it is outside the tank. Let's say it's 20 degrees Celsius that day. Well, unfortunately, there is no way of perfectly isolating this liquid hydrogen from that temperature. Yes, you can have this really nice vacuum seal, but eventually heat is going to creep in. And as that heat creeps in, raises this temperature, hydrogen turns from a liquid to a gas, the pressure rises, and you then need to vent this hydrogen. So this is what happens today when you transport liquid hydrogen. That carrier that's carrying that giant tank of liquid hydrogen is slowly venting hydrogen along the way. It's just an inevitable loss that is going to occur. Well, this doesn't really work with passenger cars, right? Because if your car is just sitting there, and then it's just gonna start venting away your fuel as it just sits in the parking lot. Now, from a danger standpoint, not that huge of an issue. You can fix this. As you vent that hydrogen, you use oxygen from the ambient air, you have a catalyst, and then you simply have water as your emissions. You're not worried about this fuel leaking out from a safety perspective. You are worried about it because, hey, you filled up your car with fuel, you wanna use it eventually, right? But BMW said in about 10 to 12 days with their old hydrogen seven liquid hydrogen vehicle that they created, you could lose all that fuel if it's just sitting there. It also means you can't park your car in your garage if it's a closed in space because all of that hydrogen, in this case water, is just being dumped out into your garage, but you wouldn't want to do that. So it's crazy, right? For passenger cars, this just makes no sense. And I know all of this likely sounds very pessimistic regarding hydrogen. And I do want to reiterate that I admire Toyota for creating a real world example and trying something new. It's when you push the boundaries and try new things that you learn, which often comes hand in hand with failures along the way. So we've discussed three really big problems with hydrogen, but I wanna leave with a mildly optimistic message, and that is, you know what doesn't require an extraordinarily sophisticated, complicated pump that fails very frequently? Synthetic fuel. You know what doesn't require a ton of space to store? Synthetic fuel. You know what won't boil off sitting in your tank at room temperature? Synthetic fuel. Synthetic fuel solves all these problems. Its only disadvantage is that it has a higher fuel cost. So guess what did way more laps than Toyota's uh, liquid hydrogen GR Corolla? Toyota's carbon neutral fueled GR86 did 640 laps, 282 more than the liquid hydrogen, all with vastly simpler systems. The only thing we need in order to make synthetic fuel work is abundant clean energy. Now, if you enjoyed this video, there are two I would recommend checking out. First of all, BMW's Hydrogen 7. It is fascinating, the engineering that went into this vehicle, which was over a decade ago when BMW was using liquid hydrogen in their vehicles. And then also my video on synthetic fuels and why they're not quite worth the hype that we're currently hearing about them. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.